Hey, busy people. In this video, I want to look at one of my newest fave fishies since I got back into the hobby. That fish is the Bloodfin Tetra, also known as the True Blood Fin, the Red Fin Tetra, or the Glass Blood Fin. Uh, these fish are found in the rivers of South America, most commonly in the Piranha River Basin. Uh, they've also been seen throughout the Amazon in eastern Peru and places like Colombia. Now, these fish are probably, compared to other tetras, one of the more underrated species of tetra. You know, when most people get their tetras, they're going to get the neons or the serpes or the black skirts or even the glowfish versions. Now, these are a stunning grayish silver bodied fish with a nice bright red fin. So all the exteriors of their fins is in a nice red color, which will give a cool pop of color to your aquarium when they swim around your tank. Now, they're typically going to live around five to eight years, which is around the same time frame as most of the other tetras in the hobby. Of course, this is again dependent on water conditions and food quality. Your blood friends are going to do well in a decent sized group, and they will get along pretty much with any fish you want to put them with as they are extremely peaceful, but also a little timid as well. Now, they're going to get to be about one and a half to two inches in length. They can take a large pH range of six upwards of eight and they can deal with temperatures of 64 all the way up to 82. Now, given that they have such a large range for both the main parameters you're looking for in a fish tank, um, the safest bet for me is going to be to go somewhere right in the middle. Keep the pH around 7 and your temperature around 76. Now, personally, I keep my blood friends in my community tank, which sits at a pH of anywhere from 6.5 to 6.8, depending on when I've done a water change at last and has a temperature of 76 degrees. And I have had to turn the heat up in that tank before due to an ick outbreak, so I did get it all the way up to about 82, and the temperature increase did not affect these fish at all, so they are a decently hardy fish. Given that they're a schooling fish, you're going to want to get them in a group of 5 to 7. They don't really do well solo or in a pair, as most schooling fish don't. You're going to want about a minimum of a 20 gallon tank to keep these fish. Now again, these fish are a completely peaceful schooling fish. They're on the bit more shy side when they first get introduced to your tank compared to other tetras and schooling fish. So they're going to want places they can hide behind and, you know, break that line of sight with other fish. So some nice tall plants might do, real or fake. And then of course decor, like fake logs or fake rocks or even the little hideout things would be good for them to get behind as well. Being as they are so peaceful, they can pretty much go with any fish you want to put in there. Um, I would avoid your bigger cichlids, so no Oscars and things of that nature. Um, you can keep them, you know, with Corys, Danios, Guppies, Mollies, Platties, Shrimp, uh, your dwarf South American cichlids, and you're not going to be disappointed. And they'll give a nice thrill and activity and color pop to your aquarium. Now, as I said in the beginning, these have slowly become one of my favorite tetras. And if y'all have been around for any length of time, you know that Serpe tetras are one of my all time favorite fish. These guys are up there competing for them as well. One of my dream tanks is to someday have a 30 gallon or a 55 uh, with just a bunch of Vallisnarius or some hair grass and a large school of bloodfin tetras in there. I think that the color of the green plants will make their red fins really pop and it'll be, just be cool to see how they're going to interact with such a large school of them and all this grass and stuff to swim in and out of. I mean, I think it's a cool idea anyway. They're also a super easy fish, like most tetras, for beginners. So if you're a beginner fish keeper and you want to get something that gets, you know, not a super nano fish, but is still in that range and gets, you know, about two inches in length, get the bloodfin. They're going to be able to handle, you know, first time fish keeper mistakes and you're not going to be disappointed with them at all. So for all these reasons, and there really being no downside to the Bloodfin Tetra, I'm going to go ahead and give them a perfect 10 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you've kept these fish, if you've been thinking about keeping them, if you've seen them but just didn't know about them. And if you have not yet, please remember to subscribe to the channel and join this community tank of ours. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video.